Hello, everyone, and welcome to an explosive edition of AEW Dark. I'm Excalibur, joined, as always, by the human suplex machine, Taz. And Taz, what a tremendous lineup we've got tonight. This is going to be an awesome, awesome episode of AEW Dark, as always, my man, I promise. As always, let's not delay any further and throw it down to our colleague, Justin Roberts, standing by inside the ring. This is a trios tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by Brittany, Peter Avalon, Shady Drake, Cesar Bononi, and the Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nimitz, the wingman. As the wingman, waxed, vaxxed, and ready for hot boy summer. Well, they gotta get ready for a big trios tag team match here tonight on Dark. Speaking of wingman, to my left is one of my main wingmen, uh, the FTW 100 champion, Ricky Starks. Hello, Mr. Starks. We're back, boys. Absolutely, Ricky Starks is back. Night club, baby, let's go. <laughs> Just for the record, for you people counting, Taz is not in the night club. Taz is not in the night club. <laughs> That's your Starks and the guy with the hood. Let's go. Ashley Squeeze, Orange Cassidy. Well, it's time to get the right music, I would say, but hey, it ain't dead. Cheers, it ain't dead. cheers to that, baby. All right, cool. Well, you don't do cheers while someone's sipping. Well, I do. I'm the FTW champion. That's true. That's true. Sorry, Excel, you were out. Uh, no, that's okay. I was actually trying to. Yes. Cinch, cinch up my tie because I didn't realize we were doing an on cam. <laughs> Is that a wins or not? <laughs> nice. Oh, it wouldn't be dark. It wouldn't be 100 episodes of dark if it weren't for me being ambushed by Tim Wahlberg. Yeah, of course. And here's Orange Cassidy, the big star, as it is uh, Taylor. The whole group of them. You got Statland, you got the Wheel of Eula. Yuta. Wheel of Yuta has really come on the scene hot here in all elite wrestling. The protege of the best friends. Oh, he's hanging out with the wrong people. I think Ricky Sloss would agree with that. I don't care for them. Okay. They're, bus, uh, they're, they're a bunch of high school dropouts. Right. That is Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. That is J.D. Drake. Now, that's a man's man, Blue Collar Jones right there, meat and potatoes type guy. Maybe a little more potatoes than meat, but I digress. Heavy on the carbs. Right? Heavy, on the, heavy on the carbs. Chuck Taylor's side that. headlock. J.D. Drake sends oh. him into the ropes. Massive shoulder tackle. Yeah, J.D., man, he's got that round center of base. Chuck Taylor goes for the trip, but Drake coming in. Leapfrog by the Kentucky Gentleman, and a deep oh. arm drag by J.D. Drake. But deceivingly athletic, as you guys know, that's J.D. Drake. But watch out, Taylor with the arm drag himself, Chuck. Chuck Taylor returns, multiple arm drags. Gets J.D. Drake down center of the ring. That's a good thing, you, that's what you want to do right there, control the man. I don't know, uh, listen, sunglasses are not a lot. What kind of a man would wear sunglasses indoors in the evening anyway? It makes no sense. Studies show when you wear sunglasses indoors, you are more prone to astigmatism later on in life. Right, it's happened to me. Taz, you know what? People have built careers out of wearing sunglasses indoors in the Get evening. Get out of here. In this business? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Who does that? Jabronis. Yeah. Anyway. Nice, nice drop step by Yuta. <laughs> and Yuta. Oh, oh, look at that. He, 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 he baited the leg, the foot, the ankle. And the drop kick to the Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth. Hook of the far leg. You don't see many guys do that, but Yuta did. He baited the ankle in there for, for Nemeth to try and snatch it up. It's pretty smart what he did. Yuta, definitely somebody that can stand toe to toe with Ryan Nemeth in his, oh, in his background. Oh. And folk style wrestling, but oh, a <laughs> little mis miscommunication by the wingman here. A lot of misfires there. Oh, went for a German stand and switch by Nemeth. Oh, here we go. They Cesar got it. They 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 got it. Again, <laughs> Nemeth. Man, Nemeth ne shouldn't chop anyone. He and and look at this page. Pretty, pretty Peter Avalon trying to restore order here amongst the wingmen. Avalon in his shattered Massachusetts somewhere. <laughs> That's Cape Cod for you Jabronis out there. Oh, wait a minute. And Avalon got decked by Yuta, but then the Whoa. wingmen descending. On Yuta and the best friends. 
Great opportunity, but it was an opening right there, and uh, the wingman took advantage. The Hollywood Hunk right there, Nemeth taking advantage of Uta right now. Hey, do you think Uta yes. reminds you of a praying mantis? Because he does to me. Ah. Uh, that's a heavy-duty hammerlock with that handstand. He does that a lot. A praying mantis? No, what, well, because he wears the green and yellow? No, he's just a long-bodied boy, and I, I something bothers me about it. Speaking of long-bodied boys, Cesar Benoni laying a right hand to the midsection of Wheeler Yuta. So you think people with long, you never say, I look like a praying mantis. Because I, mean, I got long limbs. challenged, as you call yourself. Thank you. But Appreciate it. it doesn't matter. Because it doesn't. I'll tell you who's not vertically your challenged. Your heart is in the right space. Thank you, sir. That's very nice, Ricky. This man here says up and only he is not vertically challenged like me. No, I thought you were going to compliment me, Taz. No. I really either. thought oh. so, but I will because I like your tie, Excalibur. Look at this. Excalibur. People don't realize he's actually six foot seven. Gigantic. He's deceivingly tall, just like Cesar Bononi. Ooh. I'm a fan of Cesar Bononi. Look at that. He looks great, man. The guy looks like a billion bucks. Cesar Bononi is somebody that, that came onto the scene here in AEW Dark and really broke away from the pack you know he's got all the genetic gifts but then his wrestling actually caught up with the gifts and then he made this association with the wingman too much power and size for Benoni. You know, i don't think oh. he can make it now you know it's a fingertip away them long limbs didn't help oh boy this is gonna be a bad bad oh jump. oh, oh. oh. <laughs> tossed by benoni man oh man that's awesome boy that was a heavy duty toss i saw it i loved it and I remember seeing something like that. There used to be competitions years ago in a bar. <laughs> I don't want to say it, but Which that's... Bar? Uh, well, there's several bars. I was in a bar once in Oakland that it happened. And uh, I'm at a... Yeah, and then there was another bar where I was in Sacramento and that was happening. All tossing California. people around like that. It's a long story. I can't say it anymore. Back in the day, you could say it. Let me stop. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a... Yeah, it's kind of a short story, so... Watch out. Hold on. J.D. <laughs> Drake Manhattan <laughs> drop Benoni with a big boot over the shoulder. One. Two, two count. Uh, well, it, <laughs> it was an awkward silence there. You had to, you know, something's like, you know. I'm glad you were entertained. I'm here, babe. I'm here. Oh. <laughs> well, you stuck that right, right now, it's going for the hunk of love. Well, yeah. yeah never oh, Benoni. Swivel oh. Well, Benoni landing on his hip. Over oh, the watch top. out. Oh, wow. The wingmen collide once again. The wingmen are definitely not on the right page. Nemeth throws the right hand, gets a shot from Chuck Taylor, oh, and Zee Gary oh, right oh, on oh. the money. You just got to try and get Chuck Taylor in this thing because Orange Cassidy got knocked off the apron. And Chuck E.T. in the ring. Here we go. Takes down Nemeth. Two times. Chuck E.T.'s got that really strange running style. Oh, no, Chuck. Whoa! Taylor! Wow. Over the top, Topek on Hero. They didn't let us feet. Athletic. Love it. Oh, oh, but the cross chop across the windpipe by Ryan Nemeth. Yeah, Nemeth really went right for the esophagus hard right there. Now here comes Orange Cassidy. Big time Jones right here. Here we go. Hands in pocket, maybe. Don't go for it, Nemeth. Don't go for it. There you go. No. And the hunk of love coming up. Oh, no. Nope. Look, counter. There's the shades. Oh, and Cassidy's pissed. The hunk of love attempted once again. Cassidy spinning out of it. Oh, that was a stiff one. This guy's dangerous. Swing and a miss two times by Nemeth. Oh, wow. Cassidy goes over the top. Drop kick takes down the hunk. Freshly squeezed. Super athletic, super impressive by Orange Cassidy. Man, hands in pocket. That is hard to do. Well, your hands out of your pocket. That, that series is hard to do. <laughs> well. A lot of talent. <laughs> Rhythm's yeah. not one of them. Yuta and then Taylor. Elbows in the corner. Chuck Taylor. There goes Yuta. Plants Nemeth. Yuta off the top. <laughs> no! Oh. Cesar Benoni breaks it up. Oh! Orange Cassidy splashing like I used to bat in the day. What a big line there, huh? That was a big, big clues line for sure by the big man Benoni. And remember, Wheeler Yuta picked up his. Surprise, first AEW victory oh. at the expense of the Hollywood Hunk Ryan. Nemeth, Nemeth with a drop kick. Beautiful drop nice kick. Drop. Pitch a perfect, right? Yeah. Almost as good as yours, Ricky. Your drop kicks. Well, there's no one that can compare to me because that's why I'm called absolute. Oh, you have the best drop kick in the business, bro. There's no doubt about it. Oh, stop it. You're making me go. Oh, oh. handle. <laughs> Yuta 
Thrown to the corner. Cannonball by J.D. Drake. Oh my God, Yuta got lit up. And Ryan Nemeth now. It's done. Hunk of love. It's over. He went for it the whole. Oh, look at this. Drake covers. <laughs> no. The Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor broke up the pinning predicament. That momentary miscommunication by the wingman meant it cost him. Yeah, I think, I think Drake realized he was legal and Nemeth wasn't. Uh-oh, J.D. Drake up to the top. Oh, oh so oh. press nobody home. Oh. Oh, that's a little roll. Yuta, crucifix, and the win! Uh, <laughs> match. Orange Cassidy, Chuck Taylor, and Wheeler, Yuta. Wheeler, Yuta becoming a thorn in the side of the wingman. And now pretty Peter Avalon. He's had enough. Rip it off. Rip the hair off. Oh! oh. Orange oh. punch by Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. Awful oh. waffle! Good gosh! Get Ritty. Avalon out of there. Pretty Peter Avalon got rocked by Cassidy and Taylor. And Taz, Ricky, we gotta do it. Let's tug it out. We gotta give the people what they want. Oh. I hate when they do that. I don't like the best friends. I'll hug you. Anywhere I go from the Indies to Japan to now right here in AEW, this transatlantic prick known as Pac seems to follow me around. Well, tonight I'm putting an end to that with giving him such a beatdown that the only question is, will the bastard be returning to Newcastle in a body bag or not? Boom! And you know this, man. Coming up next on Dock, this one will be sick. Pack competes against Jack Evans. in all of professional wrestling and gifted handstanders. Wow. I usually do that when I get out of the car to 7-Eleven. That's how I go in. But do wow. You, do you do it on a ramp? I do it barefoot. I actually wear flip-flops and I wear uh, carpenter gloves. So you put the flip-flops on your hands? Yes. Oh, I yeah. see. And I put the gloves on my feet. It's crazy, but you gotta see. Toe socks. Just to get a slurpee. So Jack Evans is uh, he's a freaky athlete. Oh, and Helico still making his way down the ramp. And Helico and Private Party loving it. Meanwhile, you know, Big Money Matt, he's just making tons and tons of big. That's money. That's percentage. That's, you know, interest. Interest off of all these guys, which I should be doing the guys like you, Hobbs, and Hook. I'll be damned. I'm just saying, bro. <laughs> yeah, come on. That'll be the day. I'm just saying, dude. I've seen how Hook uses your credit card. you got to put a stop to it. I can't even find my credit card. <laughs> and his opponent. From Newcastle upon Tyne, England, weighing to 106 pounds, he is a bastard. Pack. Well, I mentioned that Jack Evans is one of the premier high flyers in the entire world. 
but you cannot have that conversation without mentioning this man, the Bastard Pack. Yeah, no, he is uh, a pack. I mean, you really can't. There's not enough adjectives to explain how impressive this athlete is. He's got everything you need, everything you need, speed, power, intensity, experience, uh, big match experience, just world travel, and he's got it all. A face only a mother could love. I think he's quite handsome. <laughs> and I'm got a stigmatism. On, and I'm secure on my manhood, too. Taz. That, that has nothing to do with anything. I just wanted to share that with you. Yes, T sir, Excalibur. You mentioned two words, world travel. That describes both of these men who wrestled extensively in Dragon Gate in Japan. Mm. And that's really where both of these athletes came into their own. The high speed offense combined with the high flying, the hard hitting, and both men so heavily inspired by Masato Yoshino, who's finally retiring from in-ring competition. A formative figure of Dragon Gate, a formative figure in both men's careers as Pac takes down Jack Evans, that soul butt. Yeah, great insight, great backstory on Dragon Gate and, uh, and, and these two athletes. And that's how basically coming up and becoming world travelers. Look at that kick to the face, man, by Pac. You know, there's an absolute fact in that Yoshino's actually one of my favorites. Believe it or not. The speed star, man. He's speed great. Speed star, uh, speed muscle. We do it all. Congratulations on Yoshino for a great career in professional wrestling. But right now, Jack Evans and Pac doing battle on the 100th episode of AEW Dark. Catapult. No, Evans goes through, lands on his feet. Pac. Whoa. Oh, great oh. counter by Evans. And he got up high. Big time high stack right there, but not enough. Able to kick oh. out. Look at that hook kick. Nice. And Ooh. Oh. rolls through. Went for the prawn hold. Jack Evans, you can see how snug he had that on. And Pax pissed. Swing and a miss by the bastard. Evans went for the leg trip. Oh, nice scissor. Great leg oh. scissor. Tried and the turn. Evans Let's flips Pack over, arching back. Not quite an Indian death lock, does not have the leg the locked, yeah. The leg's locked, but it allows Evans to vault back through, and there we see Matt Hardy, the Hardy family office. Well, that shows great neck power. Oh, but Whoa. that Northern Lights suplex release, but nice counter. That single boot into the chest of Pac, knocking him to the outside, Jack Evans. Coming, oh no, puts on the brakes, Pac. Oh! Man, oh man, yep. oh man. Guess what? Call the practitioner, because you know what we have right now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh my God. Please. Jack Nasty Lander. Evans, the leg swept out by Pac. Oh, wow, uh -oh. Isaiah. And what about what we saw last Wednesday night on Dynamite? Andrade El Idolo once again getting in the face of Pac, trying to undermine his relationship with the Lucha Bros. The Pen triangle, yeah. Penta, El Cerro Miedo, and Ray Phoenix. That is a story to keep your eye on, this rivalry between Andrade El Idolo and the Death Triangle. Oh, yeah, you can see, uh, you, to your point, Excalibur, Andrade definitely stirring it and sticking a needle in it, you know, a knife in it, I should say, and turning it. And what about it? Let's not forget my celebration. It was that was amazing. It was amazing. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was, it was great. Awesome. Huh? It was awesome. Did, did you guys? We got rid of the guy that, excuse me, Excalibur, I'm in the middle of a conversation with a teammate. Hold on. Cover here, lateral press. Two count. Now I'll speak. Here's the thing, we got rid of the guy that was had a, a solo agenda. You, sir, are a team player. So we need to use, the, yeah. there's no I in team as the cliche goes. Us, we. Right, next cowboy like you and I, we're a team. Next yes. Cowboy. You want to say we, I. You're been, the man, Rick. you're the man. Been nearly together for 100 episodes here on AEW. That's right. What a great and relation. So did you guys instruct the band to play out of tune, or was that just by the accident? Band, that's a whole, that was the Escalibur, I swear I will slap you right now. They weren't out of tune. They was called When the Saints Come Marching In, and it's a very historical song it is. in New Orleans. It is. New Orleans. I didn't think they were out of tune. Well, well actually, each, it was the wrong band that showed up. Each, that, each member of the band seemed to be playing their own <laughs> jazz interpretation <laughs> of the song. because we, they were drinking beforehand. That's a whole other story. And it was the wrong band that was there. That's not who I booked. Oh, and even the, 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 other, the other balloons didn't come in. We only had six balloons. It was a real <laughs> shitty setup because we didn't have the right balloons. Anyway, enough thought was gone. Here we go. It was a great celebration either way, and I don't care what anyone says. Ricky, I was so proud of you, so happy for you. Thank and you. And look at Pac right now, all over. Evans, man, Evans is just hurting. Driving the boot into the chest of Evans. With that knee, watch it. Pac, See keep behind that knee right there. Oh, no. Coming. That could happen. Trying to work out some kinks. 
but Evans still down, still on the mat. Well, as both of you guys know, there's so many, you know, in your knee joint, there's so many little tendons and ligaments and stuff, any like meniscus, any kind of... PCL. PCL, ACL, anything can happen. You but know? it's you not, know. not stopping pack right no, here. No, no, it's not. No, you're right. Fight through it, baby. I'm doing super duper plex right here. Evans, ooh, right hands to the to the ribs. And oh, the point of the elbow into the face of oh, Pat. Oh, oh my God. Oh, God. oh no. Bad, bad landing. That was a bad. terrible landing for Pack, but Evans. Watch Evans. Jack Evans up to the top. This guy's crazy. Jack Evans from oh. the heavens. Damn. My God, Sky Twister Press. I'll tell you what, man, Pat caught him. Foot right in the, let's see again, right in the face, I believe. Bam. Oh, right yeah. There, yeah. It might have been the knee of Evans. I think you're right. Pia. The knee. And Pack. Man, oh, you, man. You can see trying to clear out the cobwebs. Both men down on the outside. Both see teams on each side, I as like you can that. see, yeah. Death Good Triangle boy. and the HFO trying to urge both men to return to the ring. Great shot we had there. That on the record listens to me when I talked to him in the talk back. <laughs> If he was so great, why would he need your help? Well, that's it. All fair, I'll explain all that to you. <laughs> Thanks, Test. All right. Oh, Evans sent back into the ropes. Pack Ooh. still unsteady after getting clipped by Evans. Jack Evans! Oh! Huge flipping neck breaker. That was awesome. Evans with the chance here. One, two, no! Man, that was sick. That springboard and that twisted neck break. That was awesome by Evans. Jack Evans, this pace has really slowed down, I think, starting when Pack began favoring that knee. But, ooh, oh, oh, oh. nothing fancy about that. And you notice how Pack laid his entire body into it, using all of his weight to deliver that shot. Yeah, you got to leave your feet, bring the energy right to your opponent's throat. Ooh, that bomb right massive there. Liger bomb to no! So close. So close. The close only counts in what, Taz? Well, horseshoes, right. yep. hand grenades, and uh, that's what the that's what it always was, you know. And past relationships between. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Pack, bringing Evans over to the corner. Evans is really not moving much at all, man. That Liger bomb was vicious. We've seen Pack use that move before, and right now. He is moving a step slower, Taz, than he usually is. Yeah, no, no, you're right. But my, that, that, to your point, that was able, that Ooh. was an opening for Jack to get up. Pack, oh, springboard. Yep. Oh, no. Evans. Oh, oh, oh. Rana, God. The reverse work on Rana. Spike Pack. And Evans goes over the shoulders. Now he's got the backslide, maybe, no. Too much power, too much power. Maybe not oh, backslide, there it Evans is. Evans changes the position, the bridge over the top, too. Oh! oh! How the hell did Pack kick out of that? Big corkscrew roundhouse kick. I tell you what, if Evans wins this match, I, I'm going to call it an upset. I think it would be an upset. I mean, think about it. Pack challenged for the AEW World Championship at double or nothing in that classic three-way match against Kenny Omega and Orange Cassidy. True, true, true. And Pack digging deep into his, into the, the last ounces of resilience to sweep out the legs of Evans on the top. It's the 100th episode right now of Dark. This is so important. One of his men to capture the victory for their team here. To have the 100th episode, it was 100 degrees uh -oh. outside yeah. in Charlotte, North Carolina earlier today. Oh! oh man. Falling neck breaker He's by done. Pack. That's it. And now flips over Evans. He's fighting for it. He's got it locked in. The brutalizer is locked in, and Jack Evans immediately submits. A walk. That oh was God. a great back and forth battle. And Taz, ironically enough, not ending with the high-flying move. No. Like, like many people thought, it was the Brutalizer that was the key to victory. Yeah, that strong submission right there. Locking up the opponent's arms and the head. Great job right there. What a great outing for, you know, for, by both men. Trying right, to win or lose this match. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Drop.
Andrade in the house. Chavo Guerrero right there with him. That's a heavy duty uh, pocket square he's got going on there, Andrade. Andrade El Idolo still trying to undermine the relationship between Pac, Penta El Cerro Miedo, and Ray Phoenix. Oh, uh oh, the Rolex is off. Andrade, yeah, Andrade means business right here. And Pac just had a tough contest against Jack Evans. What shape is he in if he's gonna have to square off with Andrade El Idolo? Like Andrade's ready to fight right here. He's taking off that uh, ultra expensive sport coat. And, oh, Chavo Guerrero. Chavo's ready to fight too. What about the other guy? It's like Andrade's advisor, his associate, uh -oh. Andrade El Idolo, heading to the ring with purpose. You're not kidding with purpose, as is Chavo. That triangle's ready to fight. Andrade El Idolo. Oh, Chavo. Chavo saying, not right now. Well, it's, it's three on two. I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't blame Chavo. It's, yeah, it's, you're outnumbered. It's an unfair fight. I've been there before. <laughs> well, think about it. When these two men finally collide, the bastard pack and Andrade El Idolo, it is inevitable. I've been on a roll lately, a winning streak. Better yet, the hottest run of my career. And I'm just getting started. Now that I'm back in the top five, I have tunnel vision. And there's only one thing at the end of the tunnel that I see, and that's gold. Gold that happens to be around the waist of AEW Women's Champion, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Now, Britt, I remember you saying that your special order. Well, nobody knows special order better than the chef herself. Now the oven is on and the flames are high, baby. And I hope you're ready because I look forward to seeing you real, real soon. The hard-hitting Ty Conti in action next here on AEW Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Ty Conti. I'm going to tell you right now here, Ricky Starks knows us. We've had. We have a lot of team pass meetings. A lot of talks. A lot of talks. And I'm going to say this, and uh, you know, listen, this right here is probably one of my favorite female competitors here in the straight company known as AEW. That I'm letting you know as Cal. I don't say much. We don't, we don't stooge things off in team pass. I'm just telling you, I think she's a tremendous competitor. I think a lot of people here in AEW have that same opinion. It doesn't matter what a lot of people think. I'm telling from you what George, I think. Tennessee, Kenzie. Hey, I'm giving you inside info. We're going to be able to tell what everybody else thinks. You know better than that. And before this match gets underway, I want to remind everybody that tomorrow night, AEW Homecoming in Jacksonville, Florida, we are partnering with the Wounded Warrior Project. If you donate over $20, you can receive two tickets to tomorrow night's AEW Dynamite Homecoming event in Jacksonville, Florida. To donate and learn more about the Wounded Warrior Project, visit AEWcommunity.com. Strong lockup right here by both ladies. She's get, trying to get that height advantage, that leverage advantage. That's Smart. what Ty's oh. trying to do. Ooh. Kenzie Page, shot to the midsection, and now Ty Conti in trouble on the shoulders of Kenzie Page. No, whoa, Conti reverses. One, two, no, instead, uh-oh. Oh, oh. Nice bridge. That's a submission right there. And Conti, tremendous core strength as she rolled through. One, two, no. She bridged back up and rolled up Kenzie Page. 
Kenzie Page a swing and a miss. Kenzie goes behind Ty Conti. Went for that O'Connor roll, but Conti holds on to the rope. Oh, oh, oh. Ada, crush kick right to the face. Ty Conti stopped in her tracks. That girl's got some heavy duty forearms right there. Good job. Kenzie, yeah. Yeah, forearm shivers are nice. Nope. Oh. oh! Follow up now. Follow up, Ty. Oh. Ooh! Not with your chin. Kenzie Page. Oh, man. Kenzie Page, Ty Conti. Ooh, rocking one another here. The 100th episode of AEW Dark. These ladies going basically Ooh. for the punch. That was a shot. Kenzie Page charges in. Ty Conti baited her. And oh, now. Man. Nice drop side, Nagi. There's another one, followed by a third. Normally, usually that's done with a gi, where you pull your opponent's sleeve down as you step through. She uses the whole limb, that's which smart. is really impressive, yes. Ty Conti escapes between the top and middle rope. Kenzie Port Page introduced to that top turnbuckle pad. Let's see where Ty Conti's going. Well, we know she's going to the top. Let's see what she's got in mind, though. Ooh. Ty Conti avoids contact. Kenzie Page. Oh! Wow. Eats the boot! I see why she's your favorite, Taz. <laughs> oh! I love it. Uh, she just she brings a lot of intensity to this Ty Conti. And she's not done. Whoa! Oh. Another shot, Kenzie Page. In serious trouble here, as he, Ty Conti might be done here. Well, maybe uh -oh. not. Maybe not. I she was oh! Cool. Gut buster by Ty Conti. He means all business. It's over. That's what she's basically Ty Conti saying. And the hammer oh. locks that DD tie. The cover and the win. And the winner of this match, Ty Conti. Yeah, don't let that uh, pretty face and million dollar smile fool you. That's a very dangerous lady right there, boys. Ty Conti going out. Another win here on AEW Dark. She oh. continues to rack them up. Kenzie Page found out the hard way that DD tile in the night. Ty Conti victorious here on our 100th episode of AEW Dark. Wadlow and Sean Spears gonna go head up against Captain Sean Dean and Fuego Del Sol. Set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Chicago, Illinois, weighing 195 pounds, the captain, Sean D. And his tag team partner, from Mobile, Alabama, weighing 165 pounds, Fuego. Before this big time tag team match gets underway, I want to remind everybody that last Wednesday night, Tony Khan made a huge announcement. AEW Rampage is headed to the United Center on Friday, August 20th. Tickets for this huge live event are on sale right now, starting at $25 plus fees. Available at AEWTIX.com. Can't wait to be in Chicago, Illinois for the second week of AEW Rampage. Combined weight of 499 pounds, the chairman, Sean Spears, and Wardlow. The representatives of the pinnacle, Wardlow and Sean Spears, and Jake Hager on commentary once again for a Wardlow match. Yeah, he may want it to be over, he may think it's over, but I'm here to let him know that this ain't over. Well, I think you're definitely renting space in Wardlow's head, Jake, for sure, man. I like what you're doing. 
You know, it's mind games, it's physical games. You got to put them all together to be the complete package. Yes, sir. You know how to do that. You're proven. <laughs> no doubt about it. As a hybrid, you're proven. And Jake, before this match gets underway, I have to ask you, how is your boss doing? How is Chris Jericho after that brutal no rules match? What shape is he in? Uh, man, he's, he's smiling in profile and he came back through happy as a dog, said that was so much fun. And I think he's ready to do it again. Now he will face Juventud Guerrera tomorrow night, part of AEW Dynamite Homecoming, live at 8, 7 central on TNT. Mike Posey trying to remove the chair from the hands of Sean Spears. Yeah, I don't like Fuego and Sean Dean's uh, chances in this match. Uh, I, maybe I'm being captain obvious here, Jake, but I don't know. Well, the <laughs> pinnacle's like a bunch of offensive linemen. You better watch them because they're going right. to cheat. Right. <laughs> it's well documented most offensive linemen cheat. All offensive linemen. All of them. Holding. Holding every such of uh, five on twos. You know what that is. <laughs> you haven't heard that in a while, right? Mm. <laughs> Let's put the hand in the dirt. Let's get dirty. There you go. Fuego Del Sol and Sean Spears, the chairman, starting things out. Nice switch there by Spears. Well, size and experience advantage for Spears, and he's mocking Fuego. Is that what he's doing? He looks like he has to poop. Well, it was <laughs> maybe he does. Six to one half. Catering was rough today. I mean, who knows? <laughs> Actually, it's pretty good. It was. The pot roast definitely could do something to your gut, but I digress. Oh, Let's man, see I here. had the pot roast for sure. <laughs> Spears grabbing the left wrist of Fuego del Sol. Well, as you know, Jake, you, you get uh, wrist control on someone. You can control a man simply because you have a little size on him, right? I mean, speak on that if you can, the wrist control, how vital it is for a wrestler. Yeah, you want to attack the points. The hands are your first line of defense. So if you could take the hands away, you're inside on the guy, and you can really do some damage. Yes, sir. But an unorthodox counter by Fuego del Sol, but Sean Spears keeping it basic. Whoa. Nope, Fuego escapes. Drop oh. kick. Man, nice those job. fans love Fuego. They love him. Drop kick to Warlow, but Warlow oh. just ate it for lunch. Sure, Sean Demon, another great drop kick, but not enough. Hit him with the deal. Combo drop kicks by Fuego. And the captain, and they send Wardlow to the outside. Wardlow, yeah, his knee, I think, Banged caught the up. apron, yeah. Oh! Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Did you see that? Powell, he's impressive, Jake. Fuego got cut off at the pass by Sean Spears, and Wardlow sent the captain, Sean Dean, into the barricade. Well, Wardlow don't want hap that happening, though. Doesn't want the DQ. Here we go. Oh, ego getting in the way. Definitely issues, but right now he's going uh -oh. for the kill. Oh boy, it's, this thing might be Dunsky right This here. could be the C4. That Death Valley driver attack by Spears. Ooh. Oh! Ooh. He just planted Fuego center of the ring. You see, look, Wardlow looked right at you, Jake. I don't know if you spotted that man. He was he's still looking at you. Yeah, Wardlow looking right up at Jake Hager at the oh, desk. Uh, oh boy. And, uh, Jake Hager and sending oh, that message uh -oh. Wardlow. He wants Jake to see this. What's about to happen here? Wardlow sends Fuego for a ride on the F10. God, Just a brutal, brutal mugging here by the Pinnacle. Sean Spears and Wardlow. Well, they just. The gaze that both these men were locking on each other, man. The intensity is real for real. Look at that. Sean Spears just driving Fuego onto his spine, and then the F10 by the big man Wardlow as he stares down Jake Hager to our left here. And Taz, I think I speak for both of us when I say I cannot wait for Wardlow and Hager to lock horns once again. On Wednesday, August 18th, don't miss this historic night as all your favorite AEW stars will ignite your passion for professional wrestling again as AEW Dynamite at Major Fertitta Center. Here we go! Kenny Omega, The Young Bucks, Miro, and Dr. Britt Baker, plus Chris Jericho, Houston's own Sammy Guevara and the Inner Circle, Cody Rhodes, Darby Allin, Sting, and more headline what promises to be another epic AEW live event. Will you be there live when AEW Dynamite debuts in Houston, Texas at the Fertitta Center? Tickets are on sale now and start at $30. The always impressive Hikaru Shida goes one on one with Matty Max next here on AEW Dark.
This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Kanagawa, Japan, Hikaru Shida. Always great to see the hard hitting high impact Hikaru Shida in action here on AEW Dark. She is one of the premier athletes in all of AEW. Yeah, no, she really is. She's the real deal. She's battle tested. Big match experience, the whole deal. Her opponent from Hampton Bay, New York, Maddie Max. Well, she's from the Hamptons. You know, I, I got a lot of friends out there in the Hamptons. I uh, actually just sold three homes out in Hampton Bay. So oh, I know you're a realtor. Well, no, I'm not a realtor. I just buy places and sell. Oh, 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 I see. I see. Just for the heck of it, you know. I got spots out there, Montauk, Hamptons, Southampton, all that stuff, but I digress. Before this match gets too far underway, we're reminding everybody that we'll be back in Jacksonville tomorrow night for the AEW Dynamite Homecoming. Tickets available right now, AEWTIX.com, starting at $20 plus fees. And then on Wednesday, August 18th, AEW will make our historic Houston, Texas debut at the Fertitta Center on the University of Houston. Tickets start at $30 plus fees and are on sale right now, AEWTIX.com. Taz can't wait to get to Houston. Yeah, no doubt. Can't wait to get the, to Jacksonville all home tomorrow. And here goes side headlock applied tightly by Sheeta. And nice Hikaru, use of a hips right there, Maddie, uh, switching that. Hikaru Shida, Jacksonville. I mean, really, a place that defined her AEW career. Oh, she, wait, 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 wait. Maddie might have, might have buckled the knee. Maddie Max. Oh, screaming. Screaming at Rick Knox. Shida. Oh, no. Oh. Maddie. Oh, but Shida put on the brakes. She did the old possum. But then the possum didn't get caught. The possum Ooh. worked, but it didn't. But the po well, the possum wasn't Sheeta. Possum was Maddie, but it was a broken possum. Right? See? So you got there. That's right. I got it. Yeah. Scoop and the slam by Hikaru Sheeta. And as I was saying, Daly's place was such a pivotal, pivotal spot in Hikaru Sheeta's career. Yes. That's where she became the AEW Women's World Champion. That's uh -oh. where she defended that title. That's where she held it for over one year. And unfortunately, that's where she lost the title. So it is, uh, you know, a bittersweet return for Hikaru Shida tomorrow night. Yeah, good point. Let's see what Shida's got in mind right now with that chair there. A little momentum deal. Oh, oh Maddie she Max. Got out of the way. She got out of the way. Step on. Oh, Shida. Oh. Did, uh, did she hit the ring post or shoulder. just the apron? Oh, the shoulder hit or side of her head. I couldn't tell. That was a rough going for Hikaru Shida. Yeah, she came up clutching the side of her head. Maddie Max finding herself in control. Oh, a oh, little backhand, Hampton style. <laughs> Is that how they do it on the head? Yeah, I know a lady that works at the oh, boutique used oh, to oh, backhand oh, me oh. all the time when I walk in there. Hey, what's up? Pow! What kind of boutique? It's crazy boutique. Bro. Oh, okay. Years ago. Nope, cover here. Of the far leg. Nope, she able to kick out. <laughs> Maddie Max. She's reading a riot act. Yeah, and this is not, Hikaru Shida is not somebody you want to underestimate. Shida has proven time and time again, she is as tough as they come and hits harder than just about anybody in the division. She's wearing out Maddie Max right there with those punches. Maddie Max driven back to the corner, Hikaru Shida charging it. What is going on here? Maddie Max. Oh, God. Rasitsky. <laughs> Sheeta, oh, driving Maddie Max face first into Sheeta's knee. And Sheeta charging in. Oh, running knee strike. And yeah, that was a brutal knee strike for sure. A lot of momentum and nowhere for Maddie Max to go while her back was in that corner. The car, Sheeta snaps suplex. Maddie Max, oh, look at the cover. That's just, just kind of a type of cover to disrespect your opponent to. Pissed them off a little bit. Put your weight across their chest with your knee. I like it though. I like that. Because I believe when you would do that, it was called an FU cover. Yes, it was. Oh, yeah. the roll up by Maddie Max. Upset. Upset. No. That would have been huge. Huge upset. High roundhouse missed by Max Sheeta. Went for the clothesline, but explodes to the ropes. Running knee strike. She powered through Max. Sure thing. Cover. Deep hook again. Maddie Max able to kick out. Oh, Maddie.
Scotty Max able to kick out for sure. They raised him tough out there in the Hampton Bay's area, Hampton Bay area. I thought the West Hampton people were tougher. But I guess I don't know what the hell I was talking about with the Bays, the Hampton area. Carl Sheeta just flattened Matty Max. She knows, Sheeta knows that all the momentum is in her corner right now. And Carl Sheeta could be looking to draw the katana. Oh. That rolling knee strike, the two and the three, the win. No winner of this match. Hikaru. Shida. Oh, listen, Maddie Max put up a good fight. Wasn't enough, though. But Hikaru Shida, those knees of Shida are just so dangerous, so accurate. Yeah. And you know this, to your point, Excalibur, she can hit those knees at any point, any area of the ring, which shows the tactician she is. Hikaru Shida victorious tonight on our 100th edition of AEW Dark. Yeah, you are welcome, Mitch Calvert. You are. Big tag team match coming up right now on Dark. Lucha Bros go up against Chaos Project. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 430 pounds. Luther, Sir Pentacle, Chaos Project. As before this tag team match gets underway, I want to remind everybody that AEW makes a historic return to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in August. The Rampage era begins in the Steel City two nights at the Peterson Event Center. First on Wednesday, August 11th for AEW Dynamite. Then two nights later, the historic debut of AEW Rampage on Friday, August 13th. Tickets start at $25 for each event with special combo packs available. Get your tickets right now at AEWTIX.com. There you go, the uh, spaghetti noodle, what's the noodles we call them? Blast noodles. The blast noodles that, uh, basically that man right there, not that man, the other man, Serpentico has throughout his vascularity, throughout his body, he has blast noodles. He's like a spider that expels. Yeah, he's like a freaking silk stuffed animal. Silk stuffed animal, you know? With like blast noodles in it, with legs and arms, but different. Exactly. From Mexico City, Mexico, at a combined weight of 383 pounds, Ray Phoenix, Penta, El Cero Miedo, the Lucha Brothers. Great to see Pac out with the Lucha Brothers. His, his brothers in the death triangle. Of course. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say, I mean, we had a scary moment with that that knee, for, for potential knee injury. Oh, my back, God. But yeah, yeah, he yeah. seems to be moving well. Seems to be okay, and he finished the match and was victorious in the match. So, against Jack Evans earlier. Of course, Alex Abraham says, with Death Triangle, he's Pac's associate, his advisor. Yeah, it's an awkward man. Uh, you see Alex right there, he looks like a mild-mannered man, and uh, yet he has this rage inside of him that burns. Uh, yeah. Like basically a rabid, uh, a, a rabid, sick hyena in the woods that has rabies. Uh, that's how Alex is. He's a sick, twisted, hey. pent up, angry man. He's so mild mannered. Unlike you, you wear your rage on your sleeve. It's all on my sleeve, my friend. Just like that guy in the front row in his orange sleeve. That's a problem. I don't know why that guy was allowed in the building. And if there's not a Taz logo FTW on it, it should not be here. But I'll let it go. Maybe he can visit shopaew.com, shop the new collection. Team Taz oh, there's logo t-shirt. There's gear, there's logo t-shirts, there's all sorts of Taz apparel there, sure. Shop AEW. Serpentico and Ray Phoenix set to start things off for their teams. Ray Phoenix made his return to action. Do you have your t-shirt yet? The Excalibur shirt? Not yet. If only I knew somebody. <laughs> Well, the longer it takes, the more it's going to be a classic when it comes out. All right, here we go. <laughs> Serpentico and Phoenix. And oh, we've got maybe going for oh, a little standard switch right there. Oof. You Serpentico. Know, whenever, whenever you get to see the Lucha Bros, as you know, Excalibur, in a tag team contest, man, it's always phenomenal. They, always. It really is. They are tremendous. Two of the best in the world. But Ray Phoenix looking to make a quick end of it. 
Oh, look how aggressively Phoenix snatches that side headlock. Side headlock and Sir oh, Pentagon. Oh, really weird counter. He uh, slipped out the back and came around. Oh, wow. That was a, a tremendous counter there by Serpentico. I don't think I've ever seen anybody come oh. out of a headlock like that. I'm still stuck on that side headlock. Can't let a guy out like that. What the hell's going on here? Walked into the boot of Ray Phoenix. Wow, Phoenix balance. balance. Good God. Wow. How do, how, do, how do you compete with that? Oh, he's stealing all my stuff. It's obvious. <laughs> he's amazing. Phoenix is amazing, as is his brother Penta. No fear, Jones. <laughs> oh! Sir Pentico once again. And wow, the kick's just going around like they're going out of style. Well, I think that uh, Luther's kick is out of style. <laughs> oh, he got Whoa. caught in the air by Penta. Look at that. Sir Pentico caught in midair by Penta. Gonna press slam, press, not the slam yet, but. Oh! Ooh. Ooh, good. He spent a little too much time, and Luther came in with another boot. Was smart by Luther. Good timing right there to save his partner. Look at those punches by Luther, clubbing blows against Penta. Oh! Head. And Penta colliding with the ring post. Sir Pentico goes over the top. One, two, no! Ray Phoenix able to kick out. Yeah, it's tough to get a cover on Phoenix at any point. He's so athletic and quick, tough. He's got, a, he's got every, everything you need, does Phoenix. Almost the, uh, the embodiment of perpetual motion is Ray Phoenix. Chaos Project now sending Phoenix into the corner. Luther <laughs> charging in, back elbow. Uh-oh, this is... This is the, the, the live audience is perplexed. Like, what is going on? The, the trademark thing. offense of Chaos That's Project. It's very unorthodox and clunky, and it, but it's effective. High pump kick has turned Ray Phoenix. Oh! Punched him right in the armpit. That's very, very <laughs> unique and very effective. I bet that sucks. I'm telling you, think about all the nerves you have under there. That's why you shouldn't shave under your armpits. See the bastard pack looking on. He's got to be thinking about Andrade El Idolo. Let's I mean, unless you're, well, I don't want to get into who should shave their armpits and who shouldn't, you know, get in trouble today. Oh! But I have thoughts on that. Luther threw the boot out. Ray Phoenix. Uh oh. Look at this. Oh! oh! Kicked upside the head. But Serpentico stops Phoenix in his tracks. Whoa! Phoenix! Damn. Just rocked Serpentico. And Luther still dazed. Penta El Cerro Miedo, the legal man. Penta's gonna fly. High cross off the top. Penta, I think he's going for the sling blade, but no! Chaos Project, miscommunication there. Missed the clothesline, Serpentico missed another one. And there's the sling blade on Serpentico, and the sling blade on Luther. Just Penta is just one to two steps ahead of Chaos Project. Oh, lung blower sent on combo by Penta. Smart. Cover. No. Luther breaks it up. Very interesting tag match on paper. If you look at these two teams against each other, it's interesting. Oh. That was on point by, by the Lucha Bros. Uh-oh. Sir Pentico getting set up. Luther's down. The stop the fear oh. factor combo. Luther got squashed. Oh. Sir Pentagon got spiked, and the Lucha Bros with the win. Here are your winners, the Lucha Brothers. Taz, Ray Phoenix, since returning from injury, is now two for two in tag team action with his brother. Yeah, to get right back on the track, man, for sure. Penta El Cerro Miedo, Ray Phoenix. Victor is here tonight on Dark with Andrade El Idolo looming. And the crowd goes wild!
All Elite Wrestling is bringing not one, but two nights of action to the Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh. It's AEW Dynamite and the debut of AEW's new show, Rampage. Kenny Omega, The Young Bucks, Miro, and Pittsburgh's own Dr. Britt Baker. Plus, Chris Jericho in the Inner Circle, Cody Rhodes, Darby Ellis, Stick, and more headline two nights of AEW Live Events. Here we go! Will you be there live on Wednesday, August 11th and Friday, August 13th when AEW Dynamite and Rampage light up the Peterson Event Center? Don't miss out on the special two-event combo ticket packages. Gigantic eight-person tag team match coming your way. Matt Hardy, The Blade, and The Acclaim team up to take on the Varsity Blondes and Matt and Mike Seidel. Eight-man tag team Jones here, so this is uh, interesting. And the, the Blondes wasting no time going right after The Acclaim. The number one ranked Blondes, the number two ranked Acclaimed. They have met over the course. Oh, my. Oh. Right into one of our security uh, individuals. I mean, I don't know if that, that softened the blow or made it even worse. But either way, Griff Garrison mixing it up with Max Caster in the ring. Matt Hardy sending, I believe that was Matt Seidel, into the uh, to the table oh, at ringside. Timekeeper's table. Caster's in trouble here. Look at Hillman and Griff just doubled up on him. Great job. And uh, Varsity Blondes have been excellent in their tag team maneuvers as of late, for sure. And they've hung on to that number one rank for quite a while. Well, that's hard to do right there. That's a lot of height by Pillman to get on that drop kick while Big Griff holds him up. What were you just saying? What? <laughs> I'm saying that the Bar Blondes have held on to that number one ranking after, for quite a while. And Sorry, I'm analyzing. I'm in the middle of analyzing. After what we saw on Dynamite during that 10-man tag team match, we know it won't be the Dark Order team challenging the Young Bucks for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. That's correct. I realize what I do is very difficult. I have to really study physical movements and kinesiology and pro wrestling all at the same time. Mike Seidel. Oh, the acclaimed. Just that number's too much for Mike Seidel. Yeah, he's, and he's giving up a ton of size. He's got a two-on-one situation. His brother's saving him here. Matt Seidel. Wow, look at that. Putting, taking Bones down is Mike Seidel. Matt Seidel takes down Max Caster. Seidel boys looking good here. The acclaimed double sweep by the Seidel brothers. And now standing moonsault press from Mike Seidel. Standing Mariposa from Matt. Covered. Caster kicks him out. Yeah, you got to stay on Caster. He's a big, big guy. I mean, you know, he talks a lot of smack, does a great job on these raps, ripping people and insulting everyone who's around him. But yet he's a large, athletic man who can go. You know, and that, that's Max oh, Castle. Look at that, the Blade just tripped up. Smart, very smart by Blade. Tripped up Pillman. And now just putting the boots to the back of the head of Brian Pillman Jr. The Stop it on the head of Pillman. After the Blade used those brass knuckles to lay out Christian Cage, our GM, Tony Khan, made the match for tomorrow night on Dynamite, 8, 7 Central on TNT. The Blade goes one-on-one -on -one with Christian Cage. Matt Hardy tagging in, laying in some punishment on Brian Pillman. Yeah, Pillman now not the right part of town, as they say, man. You got four hombres that are looking to whoop your ass in that corner, and that's exactly what Anthony Bones is doing right now to Pillman. Hardy family office. Tags too. Hardy family office and the acclaim doing a good job of cutting the ring in half. Ryan Pillman Jr. sent into the corner. Back elbow from Caster. Oh, Bowens, nobody home. Pillman tried to roll out, tried to make the tag. Stopped right there. Caster stopping Pillman. Pillman powering out with that backdrop, though. Back body drop by Pillman as he makes the tag after Griff Garrison. Garrison comes in, takes down the acclaim, the blade taken out. Hardy dropped down. Very rangy, super athletic, and strong Griff Garrison. Whoa! Massive boot by Garrison. This young man has become quite the competitor, and we watched it happen, evolve over here throughout many of these ep 100 episodes of Dark. We most certainly did, Taz. And I mean, we saw the birth of the Varsity Blondes right here on Dark, and the acclaimed as well. Yeah, well, elevation gets a lot of love here in AW, and that's nice. But listen, oh! respect Dark. Respect dog people. Garrison, the Falcon Arrow, he's done the he's deal. Done it. Oh. No, nobody kicks out of the Falcon Arrow. Man, I'll tell you what, Bowen's trying to shake that off. Oh boy, here comes Seidel, Matt Seidel is. Matt Seidel. Ooh, chopping kick to the outside thigh of Anthony Bowens. Bowens, swinging a miss after catching that kick and he caught the roundhouse. 
drops down. And What's now this? What do they got in mind? Side Dallas, what the heck? Look, looking for the stereo Meteora. Damn. Great shot by the Seidel brothers. One, two, no blade in there to break it up. Had to, otherwise Bones was done. Pinpoint accuracy on the drop kick by Mike Seidel. Knocks the blade to the outside. Matt Hardy, the legal man. Big money man. Side effect. And Mike Seidel landed high on his shoulders on the back of his head. So does Matt Seidel. Matt Hardy, another side effect coming, maybe not. Garrison fights his way out of it. Rolling elbow strike. Bowens, pinpoint accuracy with the thrust kick. There we go. Oh! The acclaimed. Oh, watch out, watch out. Caster, Caster. The high cross from Brian Pillman Jr. Pillman went for the thrust kick. Matt Hardy boots to the midsection. Twist of fate. And Mike Seidel. Whoa, good twist counter, of, good counter. Twist of fate avoided thrust kick. And he lands in the split. Such tremendous flexibility by the yoga monster. Oh, that yoga, yoga Jones. And now the bunnies on the apron yelling at Bryce. Oh, the, the brass knocks by the blade. What a shot. Just laid out Mike Seidel. Seidel is out like a light. Forget about it. Hardy trusts. I don't think Hardy even realized what happened. The Acclaim, The Blade, and Matt Hardy. How quick did Blade use those knucks? And it'll be Blade and Christian Cage tomorrow night on Dynamite. Now both Blade and Hardy wearing out the Seidel's. Oh! Uh-oh. Uh Here we go. Marco Stunt, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus. See anybody push their head out of the ring like that? That was really weird. Chasing the HFO up the ramp. And back inside the ring. Looks like the top two ranked teams in AEW are having a war of words, but now it's gotten physical. Pillman going after Anthony Bowens, Max Caster getting dropped by Griff Garrison. Brian Pillman Jr. and Bowens. Bones, oh, Bones breaks free, but Griff Garrison, big rolling elbow strike and a thrust kick by Brian Pillman Jr. The varsity blondes and the acclaim are on a collision course. Women's action coming up right now. Legit Layla Hirsch goes one on one against Diamante. This next bout is set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from the 305, Diamante. Before this match gets underway, we want to remind everybody that AEW is collaborating with the Wounded Warrior Project. You donate over $20, you can receive two tickets to tomorrow night's AEW Dynamite Homecoming in Jacksonville, Florida at Daly's Place. To donate and learn more about the Wounded Warrior Project, visit AEWcommunity.com. Layla Hirsch. As tomorrow night on Dynamite, legit Layla Hirsch has a huge opportunity. She will be facing the Bunny in an NWA Women's World Championship Eliminator match. Serena Deeb was the top contender, though due to injury, she had to pull out. Now, it will either be the Bunny or this woman, legit Layla Hirsch, challenging for that title. Yeah, like you said, man, that's a, a massive opportunity for both ladies. 
Bunny and or you know Layla Hurst. So we'll see how that thing works out. But right now you got to deal with Diamante man which is not an easy task if you're Hirsch. Diamante picked up the victory last week over Big Swole in uh, controversial fashion, shall we say. Layla hey, Hirsch wins a win. Goes for the trip and, ooh, oh, nice little five minutes carry. Oh, look at this immediately. She's going for that Juju Katami, that cross arm breaker. Well, I guess maybe apropos be a fire woman's carry. And, oh, Layla Hirsch! Tope Suicida. Leaving it all out there. And you see Diamante with that sleeve on her right arm. I'm not sure if that's to, to hide an injury or just for compression, but Layla was targeting that right arm, so maybe she knows something Ooh. we don't, Taz. Yeah, could be, you don't know. You know, sometimes you see someone go in the trainer's room, they're getting work done, they try to keep it on the D-Lo, but you find out, you see it, and they, you know, make it hot pink, so you think it's just some kind of a fashion thing, but there's some kind of a, maybe there's some kind of an issue with the elbow or tricep. Well, bicep on the arm of Diamante to the point you just made. Layla driven face first into that middle turnbuckle pad, and now Diamante just repeated boots into the face of legit Layla Hirsch. And you know Diamante just, she's got no back down in her. She is a mean, nasty girl out of Miami. She's as tough as she, as she comes off. Layla Hirsch sent into the ropes, back elbow by Diamante. Using that right elbow, so showing no ill effects here. And Diamante, the splash. One, two, no. Layla kicking out. Yeah, that's hard. I mean, that's a hard splash. You're using all of your body weight hits your opponent. You know, traditionally a splash would be your hands go out front, like Superman style, and you land, you know, on your forearms and hands. And this is all your weight. Taz Layla Hirsch has that left shoulder taped up, and that Diamante was targeting there. Maybe hoping to weaken the shoulder of Layla Hirsch and uh, maybe even take Layla out of that women's uh, NWA Women's World Championship Eliminator match tomorrow night. I mean, it's a tough draw right now for Hirsch to deal with Diamante before tomorrow night against Bunny. It's is big. Oh, Diamante calling for a timeout, but no timeout. Oh! Ho, ho! Nice in momentum. Good job with that back throw right there by Layla Hirsch. Layla Gut Hirsch. wrench here. Gut wrench. Taking Diamante over the top, and Layla swinging for the fences. Diamante in serious trouble here as Layla goes up. Springboard, moonsault, one, two, no! Diamante grabs, oh! Hold look on, at, that, 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 that's Bunny. Bunny coming down, and she, she threw, through the chair in the ring. It'll be Bunny and Layla tomorrow in that NWA Women's World Championship Eliminator. Oh, look, big swole. Diamante was crawling for the chair. And swole, who had that victory stolen from her last week by oh. Diamante. I release German, just caught Diamante. There's Bow. a knee strike. That might be it. Big knee strike. One, two, no, Diamante kicks out. Wow, that was, I thought that was it. You can see that Leela Hirsch, and now she's going for that arm bar. And targeting the left arm and gets the immediate tap out. There's your winner, legit Leila Hirsch. Taz, nothing fancy about it. She just locked in that cross arm breaker, and Diamante had no choice. Yeah, no, no, no choice at all. And I mean, given assist right there, I guess the big swole. But there was a lot of moving parts in this thing here. You know, Bunny wanted to get involved and screw up the situation Big, for Layla Hirsch. Big Swole getting some measure of revenge on Diamante. Oh, there's more revenge. And Swole not taking this lion down. Ooh, headbutts by Big Swole. Diamante sent packing. She's not done. Oh, no. Ooh. Diamante and Swole. I mean, Diamante just went through a match with Layla Hirsch. Taz, we got to get security out here. We got to, we got to separate these two athletes. They are teeing off. I wouldn't want to separate them. They're beating the living hell out of each other. Diamante and Swole battling it out. Always great to see the purveyor of violence, John Moxley, in action on AEW Dark. This next contest is set for a one-fall. 
score with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Cincinnati, Ohio, weighing 231 pounds. Jim Moxley! Taz, this packed house in Charlotte, North Carolina. Going to see John Moxley, the purveyor of violence, in action. It's rare when it happens on Dark Taz, but it's always memorable. It's always special. 100 episodes of Dark here tonight. Oh, yes, sir. I got to say, even though I've had my issues with John Moxley in the past, he knows how to bring the intensity and amp up the arena when he comes out for sure. He's always ready for a fight. He's always pissed off, pent up, angry. I respect that part. I'll tell you that right now. As North Carolina's John Moxley country. Ruby, wild thing. Yeah. All right. And oh, oh. Brick not having it. Brick Aldridge. We've seen him in action on AEW Dark before. As you can see, a very powerfully built man and taking advantage of John Moxley here. Big, thick, powerful brick. Yeah, he was like, uh, enough of the fanfare. I'm gonna shut you down here. And John Moxley, Cincinnati born and bred AEW, making our Cincinnati debut at the Fifth Third Arena on Wednesday, September 8th for the fallout of All Out. Tickets on sale right now, starting at $25, AEWTIX.com. John Moxley. Oh, he's lining them up. Oh, a little round kick to the chest. I thought he was gonna close on him. Moxley just rocking Brick Aldridge. Aldridge goes for the trip. Leapfrog. Great spring by Aldridge. Dropkick takes down Moxley. It's a big man throwing a dropkick there. It certainly is. Moxley, I think, taken, uh, taken by surprise by the agility of Aldridge. Yeah, I didn't expect that myself. Aldridge. Maybe going big Beal here. Yeah, wow. It's a low Beal. Sending Moxley across the ring. That is the power of Brick Aldridge on display. God, looks like he squats well, like north of 650, 700 pounds. Look at those glutes, those hammies, those quads, big, thick, lower body. Just look how easily he hoisted up Moxley for the shoulder breaker. Now Brick Aldridge targeting that shoulder of Moxley. Maybe looking to neutralize uh, the paradigm shift. Took the long way around for that. <laughs> that inverted top wrist lock. Should have used ways. I'm a Google Maps guy myself. <laughs> Moxley. Reaching for the ropes. Maybe not. Right hand, left hand. Quick shots, quick shots. Back elbow by Aldridge, though. Getting the big, strong power. Yeah, that's, Aldridge knows how to use his size. Very well. Charging into the corner. Oh, what oh, oh, watch out. Moxley explodes out of the corner, boots to the midsection of Aldridge. He's chopping him down and getting in the face of referee Paul Turner. John Moxley getting Aldridge up top. What's Mox got in mind here? Dangerous territory. As Moxley, be going superplex possibly. Can he get the big man up? Yes, he can. Used a lot of muscle, did Mox, but he got him over. John Moxley bringing Brick Aldridge back in the hard way, and now Aldridge caught. Look for the paradigm shift, but whoa, oh. Got that rear naked in, got the legs in, the grapes are in. Look how strong this guy is, able to hold him up for a little bit. And Moxley changes his grip, but still, Aldridge taps out. The winner of this match, John Moxley. Taz, break that down for us. John Moxley, as Brick Aldridge started falling back, Moxley had to release his left arm, and then he completely changed his grip, and I think he actually got it cinched and tighter. He did, because you know, his opponent's got a real thick neck thick trap, so you have to shift sometimes, and that thicker neck can add to a better choke out of it.
Well, Moxley, like you were saying, when he got that choke on, man, I'll tell you what. I mean, that's your point. He changed his grip. He had a opponent with that big, thick neck. There's a lot of circumference to choke out with a man with a thicker neck. John Moxley victorious on this 100th episode of Dark. Coming up right now on Dark, the one, the only Penelope Ford. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching a ring from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Penelope Ford. Charlotte, North Carolina has been a great host to AEW, and we are teaming up with a local charity here in Charlotte, the Safe Alliance. AEW has already donated $100,000 to Safe Alliance. If you can, please join us at AEWFightForTheFallen.com and give. It's a great organization here in Charlotte, the Safe Alliance, where hope and healing begin. Reporting from American Samoa, Rekka to Haka. So I want to let you know, you know, uh, for those wondering, uh, Penelope Ford and myself had several conversations recently due to her ring attire, if you notice. It looks orange. It's not. It's not. It's actually red with a yellow athletic gold outline, which gives it a orange look. Oh, I thought it was because you had the midsection of your gear cut out. No, I used to. Uh, I have singlets. I call that the candy shop window <laughs> when you wore it. Side headlock taken by Rekka Tahaka. Just trying to give you some backstage info, like my conversation with the talent. I can't believe you talked to somebody about wearing orange tags. That's so unlike you. Rekka Tahaka. Went, uh, went for the, uh, the reversal. The hip toss takes Penelope over the hard way. Yeah, Rekka, she's, uh, we've seen her before. It's a good arm jag right there. She's a strong athlete, in great shape. Rekka Tahaka has Penelope in the corner. Penelope Ford. Oh, monkey flip sent it. Penelope across the ring. Rekka using her length to send Penelope flying. Oh, but Penelope kicked to the kneecap. That's the thing with Penelope. You leave one opening for her, she'll catch it. She will catch it, and she's going to follow up, and she just did. And now, oh, just mounted shots by the super bad girl, Penelope Ford. Well, Penelope's a tough, mean girl out of Philadelphia. There's a lot of mean people in Philadelphia. Really? Oh, yeah, I know. Very well, trust me. Take your word for it. Look at this. Penelope just choking Rekka Tahaka on that center strand. Think I should have cut out the belly of my singlet like her? Yeah. What? Oh! Taz, I mean, if they invent a time machine, that's the first thing we've got to do. Because then people would have saw my abs. Yeah. I was hiding my abs a little while. But enough about me. Oh, but, oh, 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 Penelope, a pair of boots to the back of Rekka Tahaka. Oh, Frank, get it. Oh. Uh, Rekka showing that toughness again. But Penelope getting a tad frustrated here. Let's see what she's got in mind. Rekka Tahaka having trouble pulling herself up to her feet. Penelope, a back handspring elbow. And now Penelope coming across the ring, the running boot to the jaw, spins her around. German suplex. Penelope Ford hooks the far leg, covers. No, Tahaka kicking out. Yeah, almost got it on that German. She, I, th I think Penelope might have released the grip a little too quick on that German, just uh, in my uh, professional opinion. Yeah, I reckon Tahaka might have been fighting her way out of it. But right now, fighting her way out with a series of right hands to the jaw of Penelope Ford. Tahaka, uh oh. Penelope has Rekka Tahaka up on the shoulders. Rekka, ooh, massive headbutt staggers Penelope Ford. Penelope, uh oh, sweeps out the legs of Tahaka, steps over. Maybe I, I version of an Indian death lock down. That back bridge almost like a like Luda lock. Oh, wow. Just wrenching up on the jaw, and Rekka Tahaka forced to tap out. No winner of this match, Penelope Ford. I mean, that's Penelope, she's mean. She is mean and nasty. Hooked her up right there with that submission choke with the bridge. Shades of like a Moodle lock, kind of. Yeah, the Indian death lock. Indian lock in the back. Penelope has been racking up wins with this submission technique and does so once again here on AEW Dark. She has excellent flexibility in her spine, does Penelope.
<laughs> wow, elite general manager, huh? The greatest wrestler of all time, getting his hands on his own professional wrestling game where I create the cards. This is my universe. We have a challenger online. What would a layman know about professional wrestling, huh? Is there a, clearly some bugs in the system or something? I'm not, I don't lose. I've got every belt in the universe. How am I losing in this game? Think you have what it takes? Prove it with AEW Elite General Manager. Draft your favorite AEW wrestlers and book your own shows from week to week. Download AEW Elite General Manager, available now on iOS and Android. A storm <laughs> is coming. Folks, we are thrilled to be here for the 100th episode of Dark. You, we were busy, but we decided to fly here, add some star power from the hashtag Jade brand into this episode. Now, last week we came out here, we asked all of you to give us submissions on Twitter for the next great partner for our brand. And let me tell you guys, Horrible! Awful. Mark told me you guys couldn't even think of one decent catchphrase. What's up with that? Understand, I'm the crossover. You guys stop flipping through your channels when you see my fine ass. Exactly. So, we took things into our own hand like we always do, and we signed on with a big brand this week. The Jade brand is now part of the Knocking Point Winery. That's right. Wow. One of the finest wineries in America. Awesome. I would know. Yes. I'm studying to be a wine sommelier. Oh, you got the wine pot. I know wine all pot. about distinct characteristics. In fact, I could tell you the characteristics of Charlotte, North Carolina. A hint of burnt rubber wafting sense of body odor and a, and a pinch of human feces. It's disgusting. What time's your flight? I'd like to get out of here. Terrible. But the Jade brand remains focused on professional wrestling. She is undefeated, undeniable, and she is a star, and you cannot wait to see what's next. Because. Because I'm that bitch. A storm. Massive news right there about the winery gimmick. Wow. Rolling Schneebus. That's awesome. Yeah. What a main event this will be. The Mad King, Eddie Kingston, takes on the high flying Dante Martin next. Your AEW Dark main event is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by Darius from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing 195 pounds, Dante Martin. Great to see Top Flight reunited here in our main event on AEW Dark and before this match gets underway. What about the huge announcement last week? AEW Rampage will be headed to the United Center on Friday, August 20th in Chicago, Illinois. Tickets for this huge live event are on sale right now, AEWTIX.com. And here's a tour. From Yonkers, New York, weighing 244 pounds, Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston coming to the ring, Taz, ready for a fight. Talk about clash of styles. You're looking at it right now. Dante Martin. 
Nice arm drag. Second one takes down Kingston. Beautiful drop kick. Uh, smart by Kingston. Get out of the ring because you're not going to play the out quick game with this young Ooh. man here. Good gosh. Dante put on the brakes. Kingston maybe uh, maybe caught by surprise. Most definitely caught by surprise by Dante Martin. Yeah, don't be fooled, though. Eddie's thinking right now. He's a veteran. He's on the outside. He's got a lot of experience on Dante. He knows that, but he also probably respects the speed and athleticism of Dante Martin. Ooh, the point of the knee driven into the abdomen of Dante, and the chop drops Dante Martin. That's the thing. You want to play, if you're Eddie, you want to just play the, the slug game, the fist fight game. You don't want that stuff to happen. Ooh, because that's what happens after that stuff happens with yep. Dante. Dante, so fast, so speedy. I mean, he's just floating on air. Ooh, Kingston kicking out. Amazing height right there in that springboard drop kick, and he's not done. Oh, Kingston, the kitchen sink. Smart. S stops Dante in his tracks, and that's what Kingston's got to do. He's got to take the oxygen out of the lungs of Dante Martin. And you know, man, uh, you know, I've caught many knees in my day in the gun. I'm sure you have too. And when that happens, man, it knocks everything out of you. Kingston lateral press. Dante. Fired that shoulder up off the canvas. See how Eddie just takes his time. He don't rush into it because he knows he don't want to. He don't want to. He don't want to get too much movement going on. You want to keep it in the middle and keep it a slugfest. You don't want to have Dante hit those ropes too much. We saw the other half of Top Flight, Darius Martin, cheering on his brother, urging him on. Darius is still recovering from that knee surgery. We hope to see him back in action very soon. But Kingston, Dante got a little too fancy. Again, and Kingston made him pay with that boot between the shoulder blades. Kingston had him on the ropes for a few seconds. Well, what is Kingston look. doing? Dante, well, whatever it was, it didn't work. Dante evading Eddie Kingston, up kicks into the face. It's too quick, too, too athletic, Dante. Dante, wow. whoa! Springboard moonsault, hooks the far leg. Like double jump moonsault right there. We've seen Dante do that in the past, and if you get it, Chance there in the truck, if you can, the chest of Dante Martin, how red up it is. Right there, there's a shot from those heavy-duty chops of Kingston. But this young man's tough. He's taking it. Taz, you know what I heard from the truck? They love when you direct. Well, that's what I do. I mean, I try to oh, help everyone. Dante you know. going over the top, looking for oh, that flipping that stunner. Dragon, dragon. Oh, no. It's no half, half and half. half. He had a full Nelson there. He had a half. And he took Dante for a ride. Could we be seeing the Hurricane? That spinning back fist from Kingston. Woo. Felt the breeze from here when Kingston missed it. The oh, edge of the Hurricane! Oh, got him. Pow! Right on the money! No winner of this match. Eddie Kingston. Taz. Eddie Kingston, so dangerous. One shot like that with the back fist. The lights go out and his hand is raised. It could happen that quick. You see right there, it's rare, but you see Kingston showing some respect right here for his opponent. Tremendous respect shown by Eddie Kingston to Dante Martin. And thank you for joining us here tonight on the 100th episode of AEW Dark. Tomorrow on TNT, it's AEW Homecoming. God's favorite champion will fight. Plus, can Chris Jericho survive another labor? And Cody Rhodes faces Malachi Black in his first ever AEW match. Welcome to the House of Black. AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite, live tomorrow at 8 on TNT.